Why, hello, Klondike. Well, howdy, Bob. Howdy. Glad to see you. Say, you going to Matanuska with this bunch of pioneers? Pioneers? Why, that bunch of dust bowl tenderfeet don't even know the meaning of the word pioneer. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You know, after all, they are braving the hardships and dangers of the North. With ready-made houses, electric washing machines, electric stoves to do their cooking on, steam-heated bathtubs, Uncle Sam standing around ready to tuck them in bed every night, braving the hardships and the dangers of the North. <sighs> Well, you know, times have changed, Klondike. I wouldn't be surprised if Matanuska got to be a bigger town than Haven. Never. Why, in that whole bunch of cream puff pioneers, you won't find one single Johnny Thorne, no, sir. Johnny Thorne? I don't seem to recall him. You never heard of Johnny Thorne? Well, sir, if it hadn't have been for Johnny Thorne, there wouldn't be any Haven today. Really? How come? How come? Well, I'll tell you how come. In them days, the government didn't give us anything but a piece of land, and we had to hustle it ourselves or we'd starve to death. Well, when the first settlers came into Haven, there wasn't nothing there but a little trading post nearly 200 miles from the nearest town. We didn't have any fine big boats like this on a regular run. All we had was a little river tub that used to bring in our supplies and news from the outside. I never will forget her last run. That was over 30 years ago. I was a boarder, and so was Johnny Thorne. You mark my words. Someday Haven will be one of the most important farming centers in Alaska. We're going to build it on a solid foundation of agriculture. Well, that's all this country's good for is farming. I've prospected every foot of it and ain't found enough gold to fill it to. We're not interested in gold. We've got the kind of soil farmers glory in. Soil that'll grow any kind of a crop. Well, you can have your farmland. The only kind of dirt I'm interested in is pay dirt. How about it, Johnny? Every man to his own poison, Klondike. Oh. Oh, if you're attacking me, that's all right. Forget it. You sure, sure got a load on his chest, eh? Yeah, you sure has. Don't you worry. Okay, no. okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, I brought back enough supplies to take care of the settlement for three winners, not only one. <laughs> <laughs> Bring my plow. I sure did. Oh, Captain, I'll have the boys unload the supplies in the morning. Is that all right? Sure, that's all right. Well, hey, Captain. Well, Ben, I'll be over Uh-oh, who's the handsome stranger? 
Not bad. We could use a few like him around the settlement. Mame, where do you think you are, Chicago? No, but I wish I was. Look at the shoulders on that guy. Shut up. What do you mean, shut up? You know everybody around here? Most everybody. I'll be talking to you later. Gather around, folks. I've got the mail. McDermott? Right here. Burke? Here. Nate Carson. Yeah. Jones. That's me. This is the one we've been waiting for. You're Nate Carson. Yeah, I'm Jim Thorn. Well, howdy, Thorn. I've been expecting you. <laughs> I'm very particular about the company he keeps. Come on up the post. You can't talk with your throat dry. Right. For a few minutes there, I had hopes for you, Mary. What's the matter with your manners, Frenchy? Buy Mr. Thorne a drink. Oh, it's your thing. I take care of that. This way, Mr. Thorne. How about this? What you like to have, Mr. Thorne? Whiskey. Well, Clarity, looks like I got bad news for you. The government refused our claim on the mine. What happened? Uh, some of those dirt farmers homesteaded the land. What about the mineral rights? Uh, they go with it. That is, if they prove up on it. So we hit the jackpot, huh? A whole blasted mountain full of gold and we can't touch it. That's the way it looks. What do we do now? The best thing I can think of is to keep our mouths shut that there ever was such a thing as a mine and hope they don't prove up. What about this fellow Thorne? You sent for him to come up here and develop it. I'll take care of him. Send him in. Mr. Thorne? Howdy, Thorne. Sit down, we got a lot to talk over. Your letter said something about a mining proposition. Yeah, and I feel kind of bad about that, having you come all the way up here. What do you mean? Well, you know how mining is. One day you think you got a great thing, and the next day the whole thing peters out. Oh, sure, those things happen. Uh, as long as I did put you to all the trouble, I think that I ought to give you your expenses and a little something on the side. Forget it. Well, but you'll be wanting to go right back down the river. Well, it looks pretty interesting around here. I think I'll stick around. I might do a little prospecting on my own hook. I'm sure that a mining engineer will hang of interest around here. You, uh, you wouldn't be trying to get rid of me, would you? Why, no. What gives you that idea? You get me all the way up here from Sitka to look into a mine for you, and when I get here, it's a misdeal. It just don't make sense, that's all. Well, it makes sense to me, Thorne. I'm willing to pay you for your trouble. You can be on your way out. There's one thing you ought to know, Carson. I'll come and go as I please. to get along with, ain't he? Yeah. We may have to do something about him. Well, Miss Murray, he won't budge an inch from that table. Oh, but you you go right in there and get him. Well, you just can't get Doc to leave a poker game, especially after he's been drinking. But you've got to get him. Well, there's nothing What's I can... What's the matter, Klondike? Oh, we've been trying for settlement. Doc give up a poker game in favor of a little baby delivering, but so far we ain't had no success. Can I do anything? You can, but Dr. Curtis could if we could get him out of there. I'll get him out. You run on over to the mother. Me and Johnny will bring him. I'll raise you again. Right back at you. Lady says hurry, I'll, Doc. Will you go away? I'm playing a hand. Yeah, I know all about that. Babies you. won't wait for poker games. Come on. <laughs> wait, I got to play this hand. Yeah, I know all about that. Oh, you want to get tough about it, do you? Oh. Want to get tough about it? I'll get something to get tough about it. Hey, Klondike, who is that fella? That's Johnny Thorne, the best mining engineer in Alaska. Hey, what you trying to do to the doc? Oh, some woman up the settlements figuring on increasing the population, and the old doc got a little hot-headed about leaving the poker game. <laughs> Doc's getting drunk instead of the father. <laughs> That's a good one, all right. Doc getting drunk instead of the father. <laughs> yes. Hey, Lane. Yeah? Ain't your wife expecting? Yeah. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc, wait for me. <laughs> Anything like that? To yeah, you? I know. I'll beat you within an inch of your life. You can't do anything like that. To All right, Doc. I guess I'll have to cool you off. What do you mean, you? Ah! What did he do? Oh, what a 
over. Oh, over here, Doc. I should swap the back. Oh, there we go. Okay. What do you got? Come on. What happened? Again. What happened? What do you think you're doing? Get the doc sobered up so he can practice medicine? Well, turn him loose. I will when he feels better. Turn him loose. I will when he's sober enough. What? Come on, Doc, you've had enough now. You Carson men think you can get away with anything. Oh, I do. What's the matter, is the kid drunk too? I don't know. Come on, Doc. Oh, what, what, what happened? What happened? Well, you're a new man, Doc. Yes, I know, I feel fine. Fine. Life is sure taking it serious, ain't he? It's his first one, that's why. Well, by the time he's had as many as I have, he won't have much to worry about. Me too. <laughs> Why don't Doc hurry up? It ain't right to keep a father suffering this way. Come on, sit down, Leif. Take it easy. Yeah, there ain't nothing you can do about it anyway. Mr. Thorne, uh, this is my father, Sui Sin Fa. Uh, which means in your language, the son of the water lily. Well, how are you? Uh, he tells me that you saved his life. Yeah, that's right, I did. And he doesn't owe me a thing. He can tell him to stop following me if he wants to. You don't understand. Uh, he doesn't consider himself indebted to you, but you to him. Oh, I saved his life, and I'm indebted to him, huh? What kind of talk is that? Uh, when you saved his life, uh, you robbed him of the pleasure of joining his ancestors. Oh, I did, huh? Didn't look to me like he was looking forward to joining anybody. He was screaming his head off. <laughs> to be sure, to be sure. Uh, that was uh, merely the flesh objecting to the dictates of the soul. Well, that's what it was. Look, tell him to stop following me anyway, will you? I shall try, but I have grave doubts as to the success of my effort. <laughs> Son of a water lily. It's a boy! I'm the father of the first baby born in the settlement. Can I go in now? I guess it'll be all right. Hold on. <laughs> I can tell by your face, everything's fine. It sure is. Mrs. Jordan has a fine baby boy. Good. Nice pair of lungs on him, too. And a definite urge to use them. Well, I see you two got acquainted. Everything but the names. You mean you're standing here talking and don't know each other's names? That's right. Well, that ain't etiquette. This is Mary Sloan. What's your name, stranger? John Thorne. Mine's Maine Cassidy. Now we're all properly acquainted. You, uh, single, Mr. Thorne? Sure, why? So's Mary. Makes everything practically perfect. Shh. What are you shushing me about? You know there's a great scarcity of eligible males around this place. It ain't like Chicago, where I came from, where there's three men running every woman ragged. My motto is grab them while they're available. Maine. All right, I can take a hint. I want to thank you for bringing the doctor, Mr. Thorne. Oh, I'm glad I could be a little help. I don't think the doctor's going to be too friendly towards me when he sees his hand I took away from him. Know anything about poker? Oh, fine. Little I know. It looks pretty good. It is good. If he's not crazy, he'll cut my throat. <laughs> On the contrary. You did just right. I'd never forgiven myself if I'd let a royal flush keep me away while the first baby was being born in Hayden. Yeah, it's a hand that comes once in a lifetime. There's one poker fighter to another, I apologize. Now, forget it. Maybe I'll live just long enough to draw one more of them. Let me have that, will you? Sure. I think I'll have it framed. <laughs> Don't blame me. Oh, Mr. Thorne, this is my brother, Ben. We've met. Yeah, we got acquainted when I was bringing the doctor. I can't say that I approve of your method of getting acquainted. Well, that was a misunderstanding from the start. He didn't give me a chance to explain. You know, those things are, Mary. Ben thought he was helping me, and this gentleman was helping me, and... A lot of help you can expect from one of Carson's men. I'm not a very popular guy, am I, Doc? Huh? Get some more down the post. See you later. Well, peace with you. All right. Where are you staying? Oh, I got a bedroll. I think I'll stay down by the river. Doc. 
What's the reason that Carson's not liked around here? Well, there's pretty good reason for it. Some of the men spend too much of their time in his place drinking and things like that, instead of working their farm. That includes poker, too, doesn't it, Doc? Yeah. I guess I'm about the worst offender. I can't seem to stay away from the place. I've got too much time on my hands. If I had any sense, I'd homestead a piece of that land farm it. This is pretty good farm country, isn't it, Doc? Oh, yes, indeed. Someday this is going to be an important community. And when it is, it'll be because of Mary Sloan and Tom Allen. People that have got faith in the land and the promise that it holds for them. You know, they picked a pretty name for this place, too. Haven. Sort of fits it. Safe haven where a man can work his land, lead a decent life, and raise a family. You know, when I think how hard these settlers work for the promise that the land holds for them, I could kick myself. So do me a favor, will you? Sure, if you can. Well, next time I get out of line like I did this afternoon, give me that water treatment, will you? It's good for a man's soul. Sure, I will, Doc. He will, too. <laughs> I tell you, there's only one way to file on that claim. That's to get the settlers to abandon their homesteads. That'll be easy. All we gotta do is ask them to pack up and go down the river. That's all there is to it. Well, that, that could be arranged. Yeah? Yeah. They can't get by without eating. They'd be pretty unhappy facing winter without grub. They got enough grub on that boat to last in two winters. Yeah, but they ain't loading it until tomorrow morning. Oh, man, getting that thing when they... they didn't get you the boat, young man. What is it now? Because we'll pitch our tent at a respectful distance. Oh, I see. You're going to... Terribly sorry, uh, but my father is very old-fashioned. Tradition and all that rot. He says that he must be near you always. It's an old Chinese custom. Tell him he's not in China now. He's in America, will you? He insists that a tradition is a tradition in any country. He says that according to his ancestral philosophy, you are not only responsible for him for the rest of his life, but for all of his personal obligations. All of them? What are his personal obligations? I am his only obligation, his son. Uh, by the way, I don't think I've ever properly introduced myself. I am K. Wellington Wong, A-B-M-A, Ph.D., Crew, Basketball, Harvard, 09. Did you say Yale? A Harvard. A well, Harvard, well, can't you do something about Water Lily here? I came all the way from Massachusetts in the hopes of getting him to return. But as you have perceived, no doubt by now, my father is a trifle eccentric. As a Harvard man, I should be able to think of a better word than eccentric. What do you contemplate doing? I contemplate going to bed right now. And when I wake up in the morning, I expect to find your honorable and venerable father many miles from here. <laughs> Good night. Chow tow, chow tow. some new supplies before the first snow or we won't last the winter. I'm for getting out of here. Same here. Don't you think you're a little pessimistic, Burke? Well, I'd sure hate to give up my homestead after all the work I put in on it. Sure, Alan will figure some way out of this mess. <laughs> Folks, I don't need to tell you we're faced with a serious problem. Well, what do you figure to do about it? I'm going to get supplies up here before the first snow. That's not going to be easy. How are you going to do it? Well, there's another supply boat over on the Wenatchee, isn't there? I'll charter it and bring it up through the East Passage. How are you going to get over the shoals? Water's pretty low at this time of the year. Well, that's a gamble we'll have to take or give up right now. 
And personally, I don't intend to give up without a struggle. Well, I got a wife and three kids to look out for. You're not the only one. How do the rest of you feel about it? We're for you, Tom. We're willing to get yeah. We're willing to that's fine. Now then, you've got enough supplies to last you six weeks if you ration them. I'll start down the river right away. In the meantime, there's plenty for you to do. Get busy and finish your cabins so the first snow won't catch you without roofs over your heads. And get your lands cleared so when the snow melts next spring, you'll be ready to plant. It's up to every man, woman, and child to do their part. Say, Bert, can you get my canoe ready? And I told you Tom would put it over. Why, well, it's the only feasible plan. I swear to John that Philip Burke was born with a sour apple in his mouth. Well, Alan, looks like you've got your work cut out for you. Oh, don't be a wet blanket, Burke. Tom will get through all right. I'll get the supplies. If I can't get through the East Passage, I'll bring him over the pass by pack mule. Of course you will. Hey, Come on, Tom. Hey, there's some brandy in that big pack there for medicinal purposes. Thanks, Tom. Tom, bring back the in the back. Hey, Tom, bring back the in the back. Don't take it so seriously, Seth. But it's a serious matter, Ben. And I think our whole future depends on just one man in, in a canoe. And our faith in the man in the canoe. If they get that other boat through the East Passage, we're right back where we started. Maybe I can find another match. You know what happens to little boys that play with fire. Now go on out back in the barn and play with your matches. down from the falls. You know what's happening? Oh, what? Right. That Ben Sloan is building a cabin within 50 yards of him. Well, what about it? What about it? Suppose he stumbles onto the line. Hey, that does complicate things. Maybe we'd better go have a talk with him. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Busy as a beaver, ain't he? Howdy, Sloan. Hello, Carson. What do you want? Oh, I've just been thinking that this here's liable to turn out to be quite a little community one of these days. Well, you know I take my water out of that creek for the post. What with these dirt farmers around, you can't tell when one of them might change the course of that creek for his own irrigating purposes. So I thought in order to protect myself that I'd just try to buy four or five acres of your land right about here. I caution you're smart enough to know I can't sell any part of my land till I prove it up. Oh, that's all right. I'll take a chance. I'll just take an option on your property until you do prove up. Nothing done, Carson. I wouldn't sell you a foot of my land. I don't think I'd like you as a neighbor. Oh, so that's the way you feel about it. Well, I just thought I'd make you an offer. Well, how do you like following me around after three days? There must be a touch of insanity in the family. He says he enjoys following you. How do you like it? To use American slang, it's the bunk. Hi, Glendike. What you doing? Prospecting? Yeah, chipping a little rock here and there. Always hunting gold the hard way, huh, Johnny? Why don't you be like me? Let the doodle bug do the work for you. You trying to tell me that thing really works? Why, sure it works. That is, if you know how to use it. Why don't you stop? 
Careful, Johnny. You're liable to come up a sale. I don't hear you. Uh, what was it you were saying? What do you call that strange contraption? Oh, this is called the doodle bug. You find gold with it. Yes, sir. If there's pay dirt within a mile of here, she'll find it. More than ten me. What'd the old man say? My father is amused. He doesn't believe you can find gold with that thing. He doesn't believe I can find gold? Uh, Dalton Thomas, huh? Well, I never heard of it. Hey, look at her. Look at her. There she goes. She's pointing now. Look at her point. There she goes. Look at her point. Doodle bugs working now. Whoop. Whoop, there's gold around here someplace. Look at that, look at that. Well, look at here. Look what I found. Didn't I get me? A very crude trick. A very crude? Well, what do you mean? You saw me find this gold watch, didn't you? Which you planted in the bushes. I planted... My eccentric father says he'll give you five dollars for that strange contraption. Five dollars for my doodle bug? <laughs> I wouldn't think of selling it for less than twenty dollars. Go on, geese, you bring on dead work. Ship can they my gala? He'll give you ten dollars gold. Take it or leave it. I'll take it and don't give me none of that stuff with a hole in it. You'll never regret the day that you bought that lucky little creature. Congratulations. Thanks. Got your watch back, too, didn't you? Yeah. Huh? You ought to be ashamed of yourself stealing money from those two fellas. Well, I ain't. It's the only way I know how to find any gold up here. If there's any law in this country, I'd have you put in jail. That's what I like about this country. No competition. Hey, Johnny. What? Look over there on the riverbank. Ain't that a body? He's been shot. He went down the river to get food for the settlers. He must have had an accident. That's no accident when a man's shot in the back. Well, who'd have shot Alan? He didn't have an enemy in the world. Rats, maybe. My father said it is evident someone did not wish this man to reach his destination. Your father isn't so crazy after all. Clarence, like we got to get back and notify the settlers what they're up against. They're up against plenty. It gets awful cold up here in the winter. And a man needs lots of food for his stomach. Birthday, Mary. Thanks, Mary. To celebrate the Natal Day is an ancient and honorable custom. Oh, and just a toast to your birthday. You've been celebrating my birthday ever since the party started. Now, give me that cup. No, my professional honor. It's not intoxicating. Now, you can't fool me. I know you men have been picking berries up in the hills, and they didn't all go into jelly, either. Like... Now, drink that in and think of me, will you? I'll be chased you every minute of the evening. Promise me you'll be a good boy. Well, Mary, a little elderberry juice improved by nature ain't gonna hurt anybody. I know, but, but it might lead to something else. Oh. I'm safer by that barrel, Mary. Oh, Doc, please promise me you'll stay away from it. Well, I... All right, I promise. That's the point. Ah, Doc! You promised. She don't realize it, but she's driving me right down to Carson's. Call you left with the you left hand, partner, right, right, left hand. Looks like a party. Yeah. They wouldn't be so happy if they knew what we know. It's going to be tough to have to tell Somebody's going to have to tell him, Johnny. Yeah. Hang ji ya, Jan ya. Bay mat chung ji, bay mat ma. Yan doi kang ya ni thoi ya. What's he want? My father is quoting a bit of ancient Chinese philosophy. Yeah, what is it? A secret is no longer a secret when many persons know it. Hey, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Klondike, who's head man here now that Alan's gone? Well, I reckon that make Ben Sloan head man the settlement. That makes it twice as tough. Yeah. Hope you listen to me. Hey. 
Don't you tell any of the people around here what happened. Oh, well, now, you know I never say anything I shouldn't. Good evening, Miss Sloan. Quite a celebration. What's the occasion? My birthday. Some of my friends arranged a surprise for me. Oh, congratulations. I didn't want to butt in, but could you tell me where I could find your brother? I want to see him. Why do you want to see my brother? It's a personal matter. I thought you'd settled your personal differences with your fists the first time you Wait met. Wait a minute. You've got me all wrong. I just want to talk to him. Oh, I don't think my brother would be interested in anything you'd have to say. I'm not doing so well, am I? Why don't you try it again? Hey, that's a mighty cute little old bowl you got there. Oh, you like it? Uh, yeah, if I had it up here, I might feel dressed up and ask you for a dance. Well, why don't we dance first and get to the bowl later? Well, that's just swell. Just get a hold someplace. Here we go. <laughs> Miss Sloan, you and your brother have been going out of your way to misunderstand me, but this time I'm trying to do you a favor. Well, I'm not asking favors of anything. I know, I know all about that, but you're going to feel differently this winter when the settlers have no food. We have all the food we need. Mr. Allen went down the river for supplies. He won't be back. What do you mean? I buried Tom Allen this afternoon. I found him shot in the back. Mr. Allen? Dead? No, 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 no. Let them go on dancing. Don't tell them what happened. If you do, you'll have a lot of trouble on your hands, and you wouldn't want that, would you? You're right. Have you seen my brother? No, I haven't. Have you seen Ben? No, I don't know where he is. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him all evening. Ed, have you seen my brother anywhere? Well, not since when I came by the cabin, he was still working. Thanks. Johnny. Shot in the back. <laughs> oh, it's been a wonderful party. Where do we go now? We're going to go see Johnny Thorne. Okay. Johnny Thorne? Oh, no. Come on, now, Doc. Now, wait a minute. I'm in no condition to see Johnny Thorne. Come on. I won't go, I tell you. Listen, Doc, when Johnny Thorne sends me after something, I'm bringing it back to him. Now, wait a minute. Come on, Doc. Doc had other things he wanted to do, but here he is. Hold on, Johnny. Now, wait a minute, Doc. I'm a little out of line. You're more than a little out of line, but this will sober you up. Ben Sloan's been shot. What? Oh, who do a thing like that? Maybe the same guys that shot Allen. I don't know. Tom Allen? That's right. Well, listen, Doc, you settlers are in a tough spot, and somebody's got to do something about it. Well, what do you want me to do, Johnny? I'll do anything you Somebody say. has to finish the job Allen started, but tonight, right now. I can do it. I'll do it. I can handle the canoe. Oh, Doc, you're in no shape. You better send me, Johnny. Oh, no, okay, no, 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 please, Johnny. I can do it. If, if you'll do to me what you, what you promise. Okay, Doc. Okay, Doc. Okay, Doc. Yeah. There you go. Here I go. Oh, keep it up. Keep it up, Jack. Come on, what's more? Keep it up, Jack. Oh, that's cold, but keep it up. I think you did it, Johnny. I think you did it. I think. Doc, and good luck. So long, Johnny, and thanks for everything. Oh, now, don't you worry about me getting through, because I'm going to pick up Indian Joe. He knows a way out of here through the rough water that'll save us days. Well, so long again, Johnny. I sent Doc down the river because I thought you trusted him. It's a pretty important job, you know. Well, if he can be trusted, 
You know his weakness. If he starts drinking again, we'll never get our supplies. Uh, you don't have to worry about his drinking. He just begged for the chance to go. I hope you're right. And while he's going, I'm going to finish that cabin your brother started. I'm not so sure I want it finished now that Ben's gone. Now, wait a minute. You're all wrong. Everybody in this settlement's depending on you now. Remember that, will you? Thanks for reminding me. helping me building this cabin, but you'll be a lot of help watching. Now that makes sense. You work, we watch. I think it's an ideal arrangement. It's not as easy as that. You have to watch and make sure nobody comes around and investigates what I'm doing. Oh, I knew it was too good to be true. What's this? Well, in case I get shot in the back, somebody's going to have to take over the obligation of your father's only son. I think I understand. Hang on. What are you doing? I'm just trying to see if this door fits me. If it does, it's the only one up here that will. Hey, Johnny. Yeah? You ain't fooling me, none. You ain't sticking around up here just to be fixing cabins. But what am I sticking around up here for, then? Romance. Romance, my son. Now, that Miss Sloan's all right. A little chilly, but I believe you'll thaw out. I'm interested in something else right now, Klondike. You sure it ain't Miss Mary? That's right, I'm sure. Johnny, you're a liar. <laughs> what else would bring out this domestic streak in you? Well, I'll tell you. I'm trying to get somebody to take a pot shot at me. A pot shot at you? Now, what do you want to do that for? Well, Ben was killed building this cabin, wasn't he? Oh, I get it. Sort of make a decoy out of yourself? That's right. You guessed it. Oh, but what'll it get you? Well, the answer to a lot of things, if it works. Oh, Johnny, you're just plum crazy. That's all plum crazy. I never saw anybody in my life like it. Hey, hey, get your head out of there. What's the matter with you? Funny like that. We're no better off now than we were before. They are worse. There are two of them now. You better get back and tell Carson. I'll slip over the ridge and keep an eye. Hi, Echelbina. Fun, like, go up the canyon, see if you can find out who's shooting at us. Right. Now, look, don't get too nervous and kill him. I just want to talk to him. I guess. Go out to him again. Go out to him again, Molly. Tell me, I think we're the one. I think we can hide it.
I lost one tooth, I can get you some now. Too bad he'd have been able to give us some information. Well, he ain't in no condition to talk now. Yeah. Well, I can pick him up and bring him to the cabin. Why do I always have to be around when there's something to carry? <laughs> I see him myself, Barsonel. He is walking on the Sloan cabin with Klondike and Piety. He is still up there for to keep his eye on everything. I wonder what he wants to finish that cabin for. Maybe he's stuck on the Sloan girl. Well, whatever it is, I don't like it. Yeah, and he's dead. That's right. A guy don't fall that far and live. How'd that happen? He was taking a shot at me and his foot slipped. Yeah? Well, what'd you bring him over here for? He's a friend of yours, ain't he? Sure. What difference does that make? You're not dealing with settlers now, Carson. What do you mean by that? Maybe I know a lot more than they do. Don't forget, I came up here to develop a mine. Ain't you a mob You've been getting away with plenty for a long time, huh? Pardon me, Mr. Thorne. Uh, my father desires conversation with you in private. What? I quote him literally. A gun which goes off half cocked seldom hits the bull in the eye. Old man's right again, ain't he? I'm going back and finish that cabin, and I don't want any interference. Remember that, will you, Carson? Frenchy, get a gun and some grub and stake out in that mine. In the meantime, I'll start the ball rolling in another direction. I think it's about time they got the bad news. Hello, Mary. How are you? I just came over to talk to you a minute. Sure. What's the matter? What? Nothing, only... I was just thinking that... Look, you're a mining man. Why don't you leave here and go somewhere where you'll really find that pot of gold? I think I'll stick around here. That is, till I finish what I started. If you mean building a cabin, I wish you wouldn't do it. There's two reasons why I should. One is you can't sleep out this winter. The other is I want to. Now, you go on from there, Mary. Please don't think I'm ungrateful, but... Well, I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you. Oh, I see. Klondike's been shooting his mouth off, huh? Yes, he just told me what happened and how you're making a target out of yourself. Well, you listen to me. I'm going to finish that cabin in spite of anything you can do or say. No, Johnny. I tell you, you must Oh, you told me, now I'll tell you. I think I know what Carson's trying to put over on you people, but it's not going to do much good until I find out why. Oh, about the cabin. If you don't like it when it's finished, I'll tear it down and build a new one for you. Found this canoe floating upside down the river. Thought it might belong to some of you folks. Oh, yes, thanks. Say, ain't that the one your man Alan went down the river in? Why, yes. Did you see anything of Alan? No, but I found this pack floating near his canoe. That can only mean one thing, folks. Tom Allen didn't get to the coast, and there won't be any supplies. Oh, well, what are we going to do? We can't stay here all winter without food. Listen, everybody. Listen to me. There's nothing to get excited about. Nothing to get excited about. With Tom Allen dead, and we might be stuck up here all winter without anything to eat. Well, I knew about Allen two weeks ago, but I... Then why didn't you tell us? Because I didn't want to alarm anybody. The minute I found out about it, I sent another man down the river for supplies. Who did you send? Dr. Curtis. Doc Curtis? Well, how do you like that? With all him, a body man. Carson, couldn't we get enough supplies from your post to tide us over the winter? Well, I'd like to help you out, Miss Sloan, but you see, I had a lot of supplies on that boat, too, and, well, now I only have enough stores left to take care of my own people in the back country. I'm sorry. 
That settles it. We're stuck. Sure looks like it, don't it? I don't like it. But you'll have your provisions. Doc will be back. I know he will. Well, I'm not waiting to find out. Look at that sky up there. In three weeks, we'll be snowed in. I don't know about the rest of you folks, but I'm getting out of here. Well, how can we? There aren't enough canoes to take ten of us. We got trees, haven't we? We can build rafts and float downstream. That would mean giving up your homesteads. The very thing we came up here for. You want to starve this winter? Stay here. I'm getting out. Yeah, we Burke's right. Oh, we have our family to consider. They call them in off your places. We'll start filling the rafts right away. Bring it hard. Bring it hard. They don't realize what they're doing. I know. That Burke's got a mighty big mouth. Well, Johnny Thorne had shut it up for him if he was here. Yeah. The two baddies up at the cabin. Well, that ain't far. Shucks, I can run up there in 25 or 30. Hey, Mame, you got a good head on your shoulders. And a mighty pretty one, too. And judging from the movements of the Honorable Pater, we may anticipate with a certain degree of relish a luscious fish dinner. Do you know the intrinsic value of a beaver skin? My knowledge of the fur industry is decidedly limited, but I would hazard a guess. A first-class beaver pelt should bring at least uh, six bucks American ease. A very fine guess, my dear Wellington, a very fine guess. There is the morning catch of beaver made by your venerable parent. The value you can readily compute is $24, twice what he paid for the doodlebug. Doodlebug? Doodlebug, which in my way of scoring makes your father one up, K. Wellington Wong. But you will recall that I merely advanced the theory that the doodlebug was worthless for finding gold. Yes, but you did not realize its value when used for trap beaver. Well... Which, according to my scorecard, makes two strikes on me. What's the matter, Mary? More trouble in the settlement. They know about Alan. That fellow Burke's got them all steamed up into going down the river. You tell them about Doc? Yeah, but he didn't do any good. He didn't, huh? So I go wrong, wrong. Hey, Pop, watch out! We push on one. Let's switch him on. Pop! Daddy, Pop, come here! Help! My father! Mr. Thorne! disappeared through the waterfall. What happened? Did he fall in? No, he seemed to walk right through of his own volition. You never can tell what he's liable to do. Maybe he's taking a shower bath. Let's take a look. I hope the second Christians don't get him into trouble. Hey, Pop, what's that? Look at that. Look at Bad, Tom. Carlson, he figure you come sneaking around for mine, but you don't get out to tell nobody. That's good to know, but we have more important things to do at the post. Oh, let's go. Johnson, give my hand that rope. Jimmy, come in there and help tie that rope on there. All right, now, man, let's get loaded up. Hurry up. Come on, bring it in here. Wait a minute, Henry. Can't take anything that heavy on board. But I got a lot of valuable things in there. I can't help that. We need the rope for the people. All right, now, take it up there and unpack it. Go ahead. Come on, folks. Come on, let's get a hurry up those banker rolls. Get them down here. Looks like the whole population's moving out. Feel awful bad about it. Me too. You suppose we ought to drown our sorrows in drink? <laughs> Come on, it's on the house. Burke, 
call your man. Tell him I want to talk to him. I'm not calling anybody. We're getting out of here, all of us. That's what I mean. Johnny shut him up quick. What are you trying to do? Well, what's what? the idea? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, listen to me, all of you people. You came up here and homesteaded this land because you were searching for security and happiness. It took an awful lot to leave everything behind and come to a country that's never been farmed before. But you did it. And now you're going to let one man drive you out, ruin everything you started. Who's trying to drive us out? Who is this man you're talking about? Yeah, yeah let us know. The secret. Come on up to the post. I'll introduce you to him. There's gold in them dar hills, huh? Set him up again. What do you want, Thorn? I promised these people you'd tell them what you've been doing to them. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about that hidden mine on the Sloan place. Well, you folks wouldn't believe that, would you? You wouldn't take the word of a Chitako against mine. I've given you credit. I've tried to help you. Yeah, you helped them. You killed Tom Allen and Ben. Oh, All right, everybody, stand back and let him go to it. And don't move over there, because I'm itching for target practice. Oh, I get it, Johnny. And I aim plumb between his eyes. Come on, Johnny! Yeah. Oh. Hmm, what a guy. Come on, Carson. Tell these people what you've been doing. Go on. we ever had in Alaska. Why, when Johnny got through with that fella Carson, the marshal had to throw him over his shoulder like a sack of wheat. <laughs> yeah, but how about the gold mine? Well, it was just like I told him. All petered out, weren't enough gold there to fill a tube. Whatever happened to this fella, Johnny Thumb? Oh, that Mary Sloan ruined him. Ruined him? Ruined him completely. Made a dirt farmer out of the best darn mining engineer that ever came to Alaska. That's what a woman will do for you.